Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. Olisi, the son of Nobe, is my name. Uh, we have today a man Kelvin. of God, Pastor Kelvin Zivabose uh, from Walk in Faith Ministries. We are here to talk about uh, a number of issues, but you will know that uh, there can be no faith without also social issues because uh, Christians don't operate in a vacuum. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. Yeah. Um, you are the second pastor okay. to grace the show. All right. But uh, today I want us to talk about something uh, not only about faith, okay. but yes, with about faith in relation yeah. to our modern way of living. Mm. First and foremost, the relevance of the church yeah. to today's life. Okay. So I think when we talk about faith now, so faith is only one way. Yes. You understand that it's not two ways. Yes. Like when you hear, uh, even the Bible says it's only one that goes to God. So we got a uh, wrong faith yeah. and right faith. So when when it's about faith, it's, a, it's spiritual. It's about spiritual, your spiritual life. Yes. So faith is only focused on on what Jesus has done, the death and the resurrection of Christ. So when somebody is, is a believer, is believing on what Jesus has done already on the cross. So that's where we focus as Christians. So in our daily lives, the way we live, it's not about faith. It's about you working. It's about your 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 ability, what you are doing. That can make you survive. You know, it's, God, it's, not, it's, it's not about God there. God is not involved. Yeah, that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to start it at this point. There is a Zimbabwe who is here mm -hmm. for political reasons. Yes, yeah. He's in trouble yeah. with authorities back home. Yes, yeah. That person needs to survive. Yes. Yeah. Why should they find themselves sparing some time to go to church? Where is the linkage there? Between politics and, and no, between the mm. struggle for a migrant, for example, yeah, and going to church, okay. how where are the benefits? Okay, when somebody is going to church, you are not going to okay. I can say, uh, let me say, we got there are a man has got two lives, eh? Yes, you might, you might there's one in Christ, okay, then you've got your personal life. So, yes. when you are going to church, you are going to church because you've got a life in Christ. We are going to fellowship with other brethren. Yes. You yeah, understand? But when, when it comes to your life as an individual, it's about you what you are doing. Even God said, I will bless the work of your hands. Yes. You yeah, understand that? To Adam, he said, You shall eat from your sweats. So he put them in the garden to work. Yes. You see? So meaning that he has another life that he has to work the ground. So it's, God said, already said to me, I uh, have uh, given men dominion to work the ground. So we have power. You understand? Yeah. So I can say, okay, uh, the problem with Christians now, we think when we pray, we make money. When we fast, we make money. We always go to church uh, expecting yes. uh, to change our life. No. When we go to church, we are going to church for salvation. Yes. We are going to come into God for, for salvation. Salvation is when we are saved. They know that because, you know, before a man is born again, he's called, he's dead. Yes. You understand that? We are not talking dead physically, but dead spiritually. You see? Yes. So salvation is when you become alive again in Christ. Because when you receive Jesus Christ, you receive life. That is eternal life. So yes. now you live forever because you've got eternal life in you. But before you are born again, you are dead. Yes. Like we, you remember when Adam was uh, sinned, the Bible had already, God had already warned him. To say, do not touch that tree. The day you shall touch that tree, you shall surely die. Yeah. So the tree there, uh, there, there were two trees in the Bible. Am I allowed to open scripture? Yes, you are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me just uh, open <coughs> one scripture here in Genesis chapter two, oh, verse nine. I just want you to understand something here, because there were two trees. Yeah. But. There's one that uh, Adam was forbidden to eat. I'm going to read from verse 9. Okay. It said, And out of the ground 
The Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Meaning that every tree that came from the ground was good for food. Yes. Everything that came from it. There was Dacha and all those things. Can we say Dacha as well? <laughs> Dacha was there. Yes, I will say it that. grew from the ground. Yeah, that's so true. can you say it's wrong? No, no. It's not wrong. You understand? He said for food. Everything that grew from the ground was good for food. Yeah. Then we came over and said, the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This tree now that we are talking about here, there are two, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes. They did not grow from the ground. They were also in the midst. So in a spiritual realm, a tree represents a man. Okay. Yeah. So, so the tree of, li of life represented Jesus. Yeah. Then the tree of knowledge of good and evil represented the devil himself. So now, Adam was warned not to touch from this tree, yes. but eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The day he shall eat from that tree, he will die. Meaning, because the, 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 the devil was a sinner already, so yes. sin brings death. Yes. So what Adam did in a day, he chose to eat from the tree of life. By so doing, he rejected Christ. So this was the sin that Adam committed. If he had eaten from the tree of life, he was going to live forever. Okay. You understand? But he, he chose death instead of life. You see, so he died immediately. So the dead day spiritually was he was separated from God. Okay. Uh, the, the reason why I asked is you have come right. Mm -hmm. Uh is because it's two ways, I think. Yes. The first one being I've seen people who only go to church yeah. because mm. Uh, they have been told that there is a pastor who delivers, who, who gives people, who does miracles, performs miracles. Yes, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, they go there because somebody wants a job. You know, our rent is very expensive mm. here. I cannot afford to do some certain things. Mm. Then somebody calls me and says, You have to go to this church. Mm. This pastor has got miracles that he performs, and at the end of the day, uh, <clears throat> you are going to be healed because everything is happening because of some spirituality that is surrounding your life yes, yeah. some spiritual winds let me say yes yeah and people end up going there you you've got maybe a thousand that's remaining that you want to pour into your rent you end up giving a sick man because of that belief that i'm mm. sort of buying a miracle yes yeah that's the first part yeah the second part is the proliferation of these very prophets Yes, yeah. Who pray uh, as in P R E Y? Yes, yeah. On those that are gullible enough, yes, yeah, to end up uh, putting this kind of money uh, as a way of buying blessings. So okay. that's why I say you are going to talk about even the social aspects of it. Okay. So now you have said you have separated the two that you go to church for salvation. Yes, yeah. Not to expect certain things. No, no, no. The only thing that you can expect is deliverance. Deliverance. Or salvation. Okay, what, what or maybe by mixing the two. What do you mean by deliverance? Deliverance from evil. Like from sin, let me say. You go there mm. to repent. And that's that's what you call deliverance, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. But now you have separated that. The second part being mm. if you want the material uh needs of your material needs provided for you must work for it you must work for it yes, yes yeah uh, and then you know when we talk about this uh, because i don't want this to be a clear question and answer yes yeah. i want it to be more of a discussion okay where where i'm wrong you have to correct me oh okay. don't, don't say right. you are the no most okay. and where i don't agree with you yes also, yeah i'll yeah. raise certain issues okay you know about the church of i mean the issue of Elliot, I think. Yeah, yeah it yes, became Elliot, very, yeah. very viral. Yes, yeah. Where I'll give a brief about Elliot because I interviewed him. Mm. And I want you to further elaborate on why we end up finding ourselves in those kinds of situations. Yeah. Uh, this guy was sick. Mm -hmm. He had uh, TB. Yeah. They smuggled him from the hospital because they told him that there's this pastor yeah. who has got these powers. Mm to deliver people who are here. Yeah. He went there, he went there to the church, mm. tried to get to the pastor, mm. couldn't get a chance, but he saw people being delivered. Mm. Mm. And then eventually, the person who took him to the church mm. 
told him that no, you know what? Uh, in order for you to be uh, to get money, mm. to get your TB medication, mm. Mm. Uh, you, you you need to perform this kind of miracle. That's how he ended up where we saw him. Mm. Mm. He knew what was happening, mm. but because the pastor had international guests, mm. Mm. this guy ended up performing these miracles mm. or this so-called miracle. Yes. So now, what causes the need for these pastors or for you pastors, let me say, mm. to end up doing these things? Uh, in the name, right? Okay. Yes. In the body of Christ, we, we do have uh, also uh, fake pastors, we do have false prophets, and we also have uh, uh, pastors from God. Yeah. You understand that? So, uh, and the, you can only see them by what they preach. We can, that's why, well, how you can tell the one is a, is, a, is a false pastor or a false prophet. What they preach in church, yeah. as long as they are not focusing on the cross, they, they are not from God. Okay. You understand? That? Because uh, in, in the body of Christ, in Christianity, it's all about the weight. When I'm talking about the weight, I'm talking about Jesus. Yes. Jesus is the weight. The, the Bible says in the beginning there was weight. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Yes. So, what was the purpose of Jesus? The purpose of Jesus when he came here was to die for our sins, yes. to save us. We understand. So, this is the gospel. So, when, when they say it's a, we are going to preach the good news, what is the good news that are we preaching? The good news that we are preaching is that he died. When he died, he took our offenses. Yes. When he rise, when, when, when he rose from death. We, we, we were justified. So now, it's no longer about us uh, working for our salvation. He has, he, he has done it. You understand? So now, we, we don't need to work anything. We, when, when we are in Christ, you no longer understand. When I'm talking about working, means that you need to follow law yeah. for you to be righteous so that you can go to heaven. So we, we are justified freely. So salvation is about, uh, it's a free gift from God. We, we, we don't work for it. We don't deserve it. It's something that we are given when we believe. What are you believing? We are believing on the death and the resurrection of Christ. That is the gospel. So any pastor that does not come and preach you the gospel and preach you any other things like seeding, yeah. uh, fasting, uh, all those kind, tithing, you should tithe so that you can, God can bless you. Our God is love, is unconditional. You don't do all those things for Him to bless you. You are already blessed. The moment you are in Christ, you are blessed. You understand? So you don't need to do anything for you to be blessed. Because number one, he loved us. He already blessed us. You can't say, you can't say as a father, because we, we, we are children of God. Yes. So I'm sure you've got a child yourself. Yes. Uh, so can your father, your, your child come to you and say, Daddy, I need uh, money. Then you say, go in fast 21 days. <laughs> then I'll give you money. So that, that's not our God. You understand? He is the father. Because remember, in, 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 in there are three kinds of relationship with God. So these kinds of there's what called people. Yeah. So in the Old Testament, you called Israelites my people. People means they were far from God. They were not close to God. They were far from God. They were flesh. Okay. You understand? They were far from God, but you called them my people. Then friends, Abraham became a friend. Yeah. This only friend when he wanted to destroy destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I will not hide this to my friend Abraham. You understand? Yeah. So he went to Abraham and told him that he wanted to destroy Solomon and Gomorrah because they were friends. Then we go to what we call children. Children are those who are born again. Okay. You understand? When you are born again, that means you have heard the words that they preached to you, the word of faith, the word that about the, 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 the cross, what Jesus has done, and you believed in that. Then now the pastor leads you to salvation, then you get born again. Okay. We understand. So now, now when you are born again, you become a child of God. There are things that you don't do as a child, but there are things people do that children don't do. You understand? Yes. People fast because they are far from God. A child does not fast. You understand? Yeah. People fast because they are not children of God. And because we are a child by birth. <coughs> child by going to church. Yeah. No, we are child by birth. Bed by bed means we are born of water and the Holy Spirit. Uh, there's a scripture in in, uh, in uh, John chapter three. Uh, let's say from John chapter three, when Nicodemus came to Jesus, 
he asked him, what can you do for him to be born again? Jesus said, unless one is born of water and the Holy Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, some of the pastors are there. They manipulate scripture there. So, born of water and the Holy Spirit is not water. It's the physical water. Okay. So now they take people to baptize them. Yeah. We understand in the water. So we, are, we don't get baptized by water. We get baptized by the Holy Spirit. So the water yeah. there represents the weight of God. You are born of the weight and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts you of sin. And now, because of the water, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Yeah. So when we hear the word of God and believe, said by your heart one believes unto righteousness. And by your mouth, one confesses unto salvation. So we are only saved because of that. Because you have heard the good news, and you believed in the good news. So you have believed unto righteousness, and confess unto salvation. So there's nothing that you have done there. It's only by believing. You see? So now pastors, they deceive people. So many pastors and prophets. Are, yeah. are you suggesting that people should not tithe? The tithing was not for, for us in the Bible. Okay. Uh, the the tithing, tithing was uh, meant to to feed the, the Levites, the, the Levitical priesthood. Okay. You understand that? So let's, let's, let's first of all, let's stress tithing. Mm -hmm. You understand that? The first person that paid tithe in the Bible was Abraham. Yes. You understand? So who collected tithe is Melchizedek. Who was Melchizedek? Was a high priest. Yes. You understand? So now, and Abraham did not give tithe because he was commanded. He gave willingly. Yes. Abraham would have given 20%. They called it tithe because it's a 10. Yes, so yes. tithe in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew is a 10%. You understand? So he gave 10, so he said it's a tithe. Okay. You understand? So you, 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 was, you could even give it given 20%, 30% because it was from the heart. Okay. Then we come to the Old Testament uh, where the Levitical, the, the Israelites are, are commanded to pay Ten from the to to the Lev Levitical person because they were not supposed to work. They were not supposed to go to farm. To, they were not supposed to own any land. So for them to have food, these uh, other nations about living, they're supposed to bring their ten so that these people they may have food. Okay. We understand. Um, so 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 they remember they were saving in the tabernacle. Yes. The tabernacle day was the dwelling place of God because in that in those days God could not dwell in men. Yeah. He was building the tabernacle. Okay. We understand. So we, we have become the tabernacle of God. That time those people they were serving there because God was it was the dwelling place of God. So and the, those people were under law. Yeah. We understand when they sin, the Bible says the knowledge of sin is in the law. So they wouldn't know sin if it's not because of law. Okay. So when they sin, they will they will they will, they will, they will, they will uh, get an animal, they will go and sacrifice an animal to the priest. Yeah. So they, they were high, they were priests, those people. Why they were collecting tithe? They were priests. Um, you understand? So they were saving them. So now, <coughs> when we are born again now, when yeah. we become children, the Bible says we have become all priests. Yes. So if we have become all priests, we are entitled to collect tithe. So now, which priest is going to pay a tithe to another priest? Yeah. We have become. So a, a priest doesn't pay tithe. A priest offer. You offer what you give. So meaning that when you offer, it's supposed to be from your heart. Yeah. I can give hundred percent. I can give twenty percent. What as long as it's from my heart. Okay. You understand. And then the second one mm. is about the baptism. Yes. Um, Jesus Himself mm. was baptized. Yes. Yeah. Fine. He said so that the law be fulfilled or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, when you say that, are you suggesting that people? Shouldn't go through the the procedure, the water, the, no. the water procedure of being immersed in water. Okay, no problem. Okay, no. You see, that's why I'm saying uh, we have so many pastors in the church, in the body of Christ, yes. that are not preaching the truth in church. Yeah. You understand that? So many people are deceived uh, because of what pastors are preaching. Yeah. They don't take time to read their own Bible. You understand? If you read your own Bible, you understand. I will tell you about the, 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 the baptism. We got three kinds of baptism. The first baptism was when they were crossing the Red Sea. Let me open a scripture to you. Okay. You know, I always want to pick up what I say with scriptures. Because yeah. when I say something and I don't open up a scripture, so it would be like maybe I'm, you understand? So I always want to open scriptures, then we, 
let me open once the scripture here so that we are uh, okay this is first Corinthians chapter 10 okay. uh, we start from verse uh, 1 it says moreover brethren I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud all but all passed through the sea yeah. all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea so you see this is the baptism yeah they were baptized unto Moses yeah so these are when they were passing the Red Sea from Egypt going to Canaan so when they were passing there the Bible said they were being baptized unto Moses so meaning they were initiated unto law yes we understand so now then the second baptism is baptism unto John which so is the water. which is the water one so why did John came baptizing with water? John came baptizing with water because he wanted to to introduce Jesus okay. to Israel. Remember, remember, we, we, we as we are Gentiles, so we are not Israelites. So if you need to understand the Bible, you need to know first who are, who you are. Yeah. The Bible says at that time, we Gentiles we did not have God. We 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 we, we did not have Christ. No hope, nothing. I can open the scripture. I can see we are. <laughs> let me let me go there so that we we are in one page. Okay. Yeah. So we do not have God. So everything that happened before the cross, it it has nothing to do with us. Everything that happened before the cross, before the death and the resurrection of Christ, it has nothing to do with us. Law was there. It has nothing to do with us. People they were fasting there. It has nothing to do with us. Those people they were people. They were not children of God. Because Jesus had not died. He had not dealt with sin. Yeah. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So someone was supposed to die for sin, to pay the wages of sin. So here in Ephesians chapter 2, says, Therefore, remember you, once Gentiles in the flesh, so Gentiles because of the circumcision of the flesh, they yeah. were supposed to cut. They have, they, they, that's what they covenant with God. Yeah. So once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called and circumcision, by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time, you were without Christ. So, we, we, we were without Christ. So if you were without Christ at that time, before the cross, why are you worried about things that were happening in the Old Testament? Okay. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Uh, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope and without god in the world so we did not have god in the world so oh, the salvation came first to the israelites so we had nothing to do with all those things that happened before the death and the resurrection of christ before the cross is that true though that salvation came first yes it's true i can show you that we are talking about christian salvation no 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 <laughs> the, 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 the the new birth begins in the cross begins in the test in the new testament New Testament, you see the problem is that when people they read Bible now, when they open Matthew, they take Matthew as a New Testament. You understand? Yeah. New Testament does not begin in the birth of Christ. In the birth of Christ, Christ was born in the Old Testament. Jesus yes, yes. was born in the Old Testament. That's true. You understand? New Testament begins Jesus when the, when he dies on the cross. That's when New Testament begins. So anything that from the New Testament is made new. You know, we're now living in the newness of life. We are no longer living in the oldness of life like when they were living before yeah. before the cross so in the in, before the cross they were baptized with water that water when they were baptized by the water it was unto repentance yeah we understand the water baptism was unto repentance but i want to show you what was the purpose of water baptism so that i, I i'm sure you've heard that yes. we're not part of that yes, yes we understand so genders who come and baptize them themselves by water but that water that, that 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 baptism of water was only meant to the house of israelites we are not israelites the baptism of water was meant for house of israelites let me show you something here in matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 let me show you something here yeah it's jesus now he's sending his 12 12 disciples to go and preach yes i want you to note who is he sending them to who saying these 12 jesus sent out and commanded them saying do not go into the way of the gentiles we are gentiles so he said do not go there 
to the Gentiles. Or do not go into the way of the Gentiles, or, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now, the gospel of the 12 apostles was not supposed to be preached anyway. It was supposed to be preached only to the house of Israel, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now, when we're talking about the 12 apostles, they've got their own mandate to preach only to the Israelites, not to us. And, and how then did we get to be preached to? To, to after the cross, okay. after the cross, uh, uh, through Paul, <coughs> oh, okay. okay, through Paul, that's when uh, Paul got encountered with God when he was going to Damascus yes. to kill those who were believing in Jesus. You understand? Yeah. So, you can find that in Acts when God is now sending Paul to the Gentiles. Just out of interest, was Paul baptized? Yeah, was he baptized with water? With water, yeah. You might have been baptized by water, yes. But we don't have it in the Bible. We, are, we haven't seen in the Bible. Okay. But look, faith was, in, was, was not a believer until he got encountered yes, with, yes. With, uh, with God. But now, listen, yeah, when we're talking about baptism, uh, let's understand first the purpose of water baptism. Yeah. So that we can know, we can, so that people they understand. Yes, you understand? Yes. Let's, let me go to, to the purpose of, of water baptism. I will start from John chapter 1, verse 19. Say, now this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not Christ. And they asked him, What then are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, Why then do you baptize if you are not Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Do you hear? Yes. You are not Christ? You are not a prophet? Yeah. You are not Elijah, but why are you baptizing? Then he said, but John answered saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. Now he's introducing Jesus. Yeah. Is, it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sand has I am not worthy to lose. These things were done in by the barra beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing the Lamb of God. The, then the the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I want you to know that. Yeah. So Jesus is calling Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away sin. Yes. We understand. So Jesus here is the doctor of sin. If somebody takes away sin. So meaning now there was no one who takes away sin. That's why they were sacrificing. But now Jesus is coming and saying, This is the Lamb of God that takes away sin. We're gonna say, okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm gonna come back to you because okay. now people they all want to repent. I'm going to be because in this covenant of grace, we don't repent. Okay, we're gonna say, so I also want to touch on that. So many people hear this, repent, repent, repent. No, we don't repent. We understand because when you find a doctor, you take your sickness to the doctor. Yes, you don't get to well first, then you go to the doctor. So, Jesus, the Bible says, it is the sick that needs the doctor. So a sinner is a sinner that needs Jesus. Yeah. You understand? So Jesus is for sinners, actually. It's not for people that are righteous. That's true. You understand? So now, as Jesus day is the doctor of sin, so do you repent first and go to him, or you go to him as you are? No, you go as you are. Because you want him to take out to take care of the sin, to take away that sin. Yeah. So that is not repentance. It's actually getting born again. Okay. You understand? Because you are believing in the gospel, then you get born again. Once you get born again, sin is taken away from you. You understand? You don't repent. Jesus is not going to come. He has not come to preach us repentance. He has come to 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 to, to, to save us. So how do we get saved? We get saved by the word. You understand? We get saved by the word. How by hearing. Yeah. Um, yeah. By hearing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've heard the word. What else? We, we, How we, do I then get saved? Okay, we'll go there. Because here we are in the, we still 
talking about the baptism. Okay. Yes. We will come there okay. on how you get saved. You understand? I don't want I want to finish one topic, wow. then we we'll go to another topic. Because now I will not end up not finishing all <coughs> the baptism thing here. Yeah. yeah you understand? Yeah. Because yeah. people will not understand. So how can this person say we are not going to we can't be baptized by water? Yeah. We I'm, understand. I'm in so place. baptism of water is an antichrist practice. How so? Yeah, I'm going to show you here. Okay. You understand? Because everything is scriptural. Yeah. You understand? Okay. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is prophet before me, for he, he was before me. I did not know him. This is John. But that he should be revealed to Israel, therefore I came baptized with water. He should be revealed to Israel. Israel. Are you Israel? <laughs> eh? Are we Israel? John is saying, I did not know Jesus, I did not know him. But for him to be revealed to Israel, he came baptizing with water. Yeah. So are we Israel? No, we not. Eh? Okay, let's go. Let's carry okay, on. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me, so he was sent, meaning John had already demanded to reveal Christ to yes, Israelites. Yes. You understand? So we are not Israelites. So I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is who baptized with the Holy Spirit. We understand. Yes. So is Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the mandate of John was to reveal Christ to the Israelites. So now he's satisfied. It, and I have seen and testified that this Son of God, this is the Son of God. Yes. So the, the, the fulfillment there is in, 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 the, in the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 3, uh, from verse 13, when Jesus came to be baptized by John. Because yeah. John did not know Jesus. Yes. But now what? We were saying that when you are baptizing, a man that will baptize and see heaven opens, yes. and then you see a speech like a dove ascending on him, this is Christ. So he, that was his mandate. Yes. So now Jesus came to be baptized by John. Then he said, then Jesus came from Galilee to John, at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it so to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. All righteousness to fulfill. So, so it was supposed to be fulfilled what John was sent. The mandate of John was supposed to be fulfilled. Because he was sent to be baptized and to reveal Christ to Israelites. Yeah. You understand? Then he allowed him. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heaven were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well placed. So this thing happened when he was baptized. Mm -hmm. So now he's testifying this. I did not know him, but this is, I can testify this is the Son of God because yeah. he had that mandate. So now, if Jesus is, is that is fulfilled, why do we continue with baptizing? Because Christ is, is found now. So, yeah, I said. so yeah. when you continue baptizing with the water, you are still expecting another Christ to come. You are still <laughs> expecting another heaven to open and the Spirit come and ascend on somebody. Then you can say, this is the Christ. You understand? So Christ was revealed. So the baptism of water should end. Uh, now, how do you baptize with the Spirit? By this Holy Ghost fire fire? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is when you are born again. Say, let's okay. go here. Let me show you something here. That's interesting. I think I've... I've, I've uh, <clears throat> said, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one came to do the signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, Jesus is not preaching repentance here. Yeah. He's not preaching repentance. Repentance was preached by, by 12 apostles, preaching to Israelites, because they were under law. So, so as Gentiles, we've never been under law. Okay. By nature, we've never been under law. So we cannot come and tell us you must repent. We are repenting from what? You understand? A person that is under law is the one that is supposed to repent. 
Okay. But if you are not under law, because the knowledge of sin is in the law, so they are repenting on what they've done, that is against the law. Okay. You understand? But now Jesus is not saying people should say should born, be born again. So unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said to him, "How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born?" Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water in the Holy Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You ask me, how do we get baptized? Yeah. So this is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. By water, water is not water. You need to understand this. The, 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 in the Old Testament, God used symbols. Okay. So water represents the weight. Okay. The weight. So unless one is born of the weight, how do you get born of the word? By hearing and hearing the word of God. Unless you hear and believe, you cannot, be, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So you need to hear and believe. By your heart, one believes unto righteousness. You are going, I'm going to open the scripture for that so that you understand how you get born again. So salvation is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when you are born again, you are baptized by the Holy, Holy Spirit. Yeah. But um, mm. shouldn't it be symbolic in a way? No, like these uh, churches are doing. But because uh, that water won't be as physical as mm. maybe we might put it. It's yeah. a symbolic gesture that this person is happy, but therefore they are immersed in the way. Symbolics <coughs> were used in the Old Testament. And remember, Old Testament people they were non-believers. I'm saying, is it is it? Is it wrong to continue with the symbolics? Yes, it okay. is wrong. Because remember now, uh, in verse 6, he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Yeah. So let me say, uh, a woman gives birth to flesh. You understand? Yeah. So a flesh needs things of the flesh. You understand that? You need oil, you need all those things that you see other pastors doing. Those people that are flesh. They are not spirit. Okay. You need to be baptized in the water. They are flesh, those people. Because the, 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 anything that is physical is for the flesh. You understand? Know so that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. So God is a spirit. When God created man, he created man in his image. Yeah. So what is the image of God? What do you think is the image of God? You know, God is not a man. Yeah, he's not. He's not a man. So what do you think is the image of God? So the image of God, God is a spirit. Yeah. Here in John chapter 4, verse 24, <coughs> he says, God is spirit. Yeah. So if God is a spirit and gives birth to you, what does he give birth to? Does he give birth to flesh? Yeah. He doesn't give birth to flesh. He gives birth to spirit. So when you are born again, you are a spirit. So can you take the spirit and put it in water? But we are both spirit and flesh. No. But, but that's why I've said, <laughs> listen, that's why I said we've got two lives. You can't say when well, you are both spirit and flesh. When you are in Christ, you are a spirit. Mm -hmm. You understand? You behave as spirit. Okay. How does the spirit behave? You understand? Can the spirit be dipped in water? No, it cannot. Yeah, just because we are in the world and not of the world, we are in the body. You understand? Yeah. There are things that you need to feed the body that you are dwelling in. Yes. You understand? You know, the body will not, the, your body will not go to heaven. The yeah. Bible says the flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom yeah. of God. Yeah. Jesus did not come to save the body. He came to save our soul. That is us. We dwell in the body. You understand? So there's an inner man inside me. That is me. So I am a spirit. Yeah. So the new bed is, is, is the circumcision of the heart. It separates the spirit and the flesh. So once you are in Christ, you are a spirit. Because you are born of God. Yeah. So you are a spirit. So you can't take a spirit and put it in the water. Okay. So you can't take a spirit and pour anointing oil. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So whenever you see somebody is being poured in anointing oil, that person is flesh. He's not born again. He needs to be born again. Because once you are born again, it means that you are delivered from the kingdom of darkness and you are not in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a spiritual. It's for the spirit. So we are spirit. So what do you think is behind this proliferation of children? We've already spoken about oil. We have seen some people eating grass. We have uh, seen others drinking petrol. Mm. We have seen Elliot being 
regenerated. We have seen in some people are even branding mm. clothes, they are branding mm. salt, they are branding a number of things. You okay? No, no, no. Those, those ones are not, uh, they are false prophets and okay. false pastors. You understand that we are not leading a people to God. Yes. As, a, as a pastor, as a, a man of God, a pastor is a shepherd. Yes. You need to, to shepherd people to God. You should point people to the cross. Yes. So the moment I tell you this anointing oil will heal you, now I've removed God from... Yeah, that's true. You understand? So now I'm believing this anointing oil is power. So I'm giving you an idol to worship. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So they are coming to idolize people. It's an idol worship, in fact. You understand? So whenever you are no longer believing in the finished work of cross, what Jesus has done, and believing in anointing oil, believing in the handkerchiefs, yeah. believing in all those kind of stuff of eating grass and all those things, we are being idolized. That's an idol worship. Yeah, because my main worry, uh, mm -hmm. I, I said this is not going to be heavy metal question and answer. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a discussion at some point. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, my main worry, why I'm asking this is because as you have said, that mm. people should be pointed to Christ. To Christ, yes. But now we have people, the people who perform many of these miracles mm. are doing it for earthly things. Yes, yeah. Seed so that you will get more money back. Mm. Buy these things so that you will fight riches and uh, everything that blocks mm. your pathway to money. It's all about money. Yeah. Uh, so, I've been wondering where is God in all this when I go to church so that tomorrow I'll get money for rent, which is something that I won't need when I'm gone. Okay. I think we've <coughs> also heard about when Jesus went to the temple and found people be doing business yes. in the temple. You yes. understand? Yes. So these are the pastors that we have now that are doing business in the temple. So it's a, the, the, the gospel they preach is uh, it, it has to do with uh, uh, money issues, it's, it's trading. You understand that do this and you you, you achieve this. Yeah. We understand what I'm saying. But let me tell you something. That is a gospel of school. We call it gospel of prosperity. Yes, the gospel yes, yes. of prosperity is not gospel. Yeah. We understand that. It's not gospel at all. The master of the gospel of prosperity is the devil himself. You understand that the Bible says he took Jesus high up the mountain yes. and he showed him kingdoms. Said if you see all these kingdoms, if you kneel down and worship me, I will give you this. You understand? Yeah. So, so now they are the, they is their master. The, the devil is their master. So you can see here in. Uh, I, I want to open this scripture for you so that we are in the same page. Let me show you something here. Um, in the book of uh, Corinthians, let me show. Let me off. Uh, in the, which, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, In the book of First Corinthians, also, chapter. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, I want to show you something here, so that this one will help you, man. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is Second Corinthians, chapter eleven. Okay. This is Paul. As an apostle said but what i do i will also continue to do that i may cut off the opportunity opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast so as an apostle you want to cut opportunity for those who want to quote themselves apostles okay. yet they are not apostles yeah. so means that they already have uh, false apostles. They just want to be. I want to be called an apostle. So it's just names that they give themselves. You understand? Yet they are not called. They are not apostles. Because an apostle they have a mandate. Yes. You understand? So you become an apostle. The first uh, we got four classes of apostles. The first class was Jesus. Yes. Then the second uh, class of apostles was twelve disciples. This is their mandate was to preach only yeah. to to the Israelites. Okay. Then we have the third class of apostles uh, is Paul. Is in our third class apostles. Then we have the first class apostles. These uh, apostles are the ones that we have now. Okay. So these apostles that we have, they don't have money, but they also lay foundation on what the the the, 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 the former uh, apostles and the prophets have founded. Yes. So now their duty is only to lay uh, bricks on the foundation that has been laid. They don't have any money. 
Yeah. But they are they are church planters. They plant churches, you understand. Yes. But based on the foundation that has been laid already. Yeah. Yeah. You understand. So now he said, I'm cutting opportunity for those who want to be regarded as as an apostle. <laughs> Look here. He said, for such a false apostles, deceitful workers. So what does it deceitful worker does? You give you engage. Yeah. You give you anointing word. We understand. Yes. Yeah. So these are deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. So when you hear the word transforming, it means they are not yeah. of Christ, but they've transformed themselves into apostles of Christ. And no <coughs> wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. So is Satan an angel of light? No. no he transforms not. himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if the, his ministers, whose ministers, Satan's ministers, also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Where does minister of righteousness preach? In church. Yes. We understand. <laughs> Where, whose end will be according to the, their works. So now, that's why we find the ministers of Satan ministering there and giving people oil, giving all those things, making people pay tithing, uh, telling people to, 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 to bring money so that they will be blessed in exchange. God doesn't bless you in exchange of something. Yeah. You understand? God is God. He is everything. He doesn't want our money. God does not need money. When you give money to church, you are not giving to God. You understand? Remember when Jesus was tested, they said, what should we do about Caesar? We should need to pay taxes. Yeah. Jesus said, who is there? Which picture is there? Yeah. In there? Yeah. said, Caesar. Said, give Caesar what belongs yes. to Caesar. Yes. You understand? You give God what belongs to God. So, you see this scenario, there was money involved there. Yeah. Jesus said, give yes. money to Caesar because it belongs to Caesar. And give God what belongs to God. So, so money is not from God, for God. Yes. You understand? Yeah. So now, why we need money in church? Because there's a Caesar in church. <laughs> yes, we need money in church because there's Caesar in church. Yeah. Where we are worshiping, we need to pay rent. Yes, that's true. There's electricity. Yes. For if you don't pay rent, you will be chased out, kicked out. So we are giving money to church, not to God. Yeah. Because we need to give what belongs to Caesar, back to Caesar. Yes. We understand. Not to God. So don't bring me money uh, thinking that you are giving God. We are also giving God to support the gospel, that the pastor can travel or wherever to go and preach the God. We are supporting the gospel so that the... It, we can have a person can have access even to have transport to do whatever to, to spread in the gospel yeah. because you know gospel is free but it's expensive yeah. there's nothing for mahala these days if i want to do a crusade we need to pay yeah but now the problem that you understand that with me uh begins where mm. because of course the gospel was called yeah then i end up we saw a, uh, a prophet let me say who bought his five-year-old daughter mm. a Porsche. Mm. So this somewhere somehow shows you that people were being duped one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Because a pastor doesn't need to travel. Yes, yeah. The church can buy him a car, mm -hmm. but it cannot be a Lamborghini or a Porsche. Yes, yeah. 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 Uh, and then there is something that you mentioned of interest <coughs> of uh, Jesus being taken to the mountain being shown this city, was it Jerusalem? Mm, it was, uh, uh, they said it just took him high up the mountains. Yeah, it doesn't so state which mountain, yeah. and it showed him kingdom. Is it uh, analogical to me going to church and being told that uh, I see you winning a lotto, mm. but in order for you to, 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 to win this lotto, you have to open the doors with a thousand dollars or something. Right. So there's <laughs> nothing that you... you the, the only is, one it, is it similar to that? Yeah, it's similar to that. That is prosperity gospel. That yeah. one, yeah. Because we're talking about the prosperity gospel. Yes. Prosperity gospel is the gospel of when somebody is preaching, is preaching people to prosper. Yeah. But that prosperity gospel doesn't prosper uh, the the congregation. It prospers the the, the men of God. Yes. It's the one that prospers. And then there's one trick that I realize. Mm. Uh, usually, these people use two. Uh, types of messages. Mm. The first one is the one that I've already given you. I foresee you winning a lot of money. Sometimes it's not even mentioned. I foresee you winning a lot of money. But in order for you, although already he knows that I need money. Mm. So in order for you to win this money, you have to unlock it okay. with so much. 
Okay. He knows that I'm going to rush there and okay. put money. The second, I mean, the other type of messaging is yeah. threats of badness. Mm -hmm. Something bad happening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, I see you dying in such mysterious circumstances. We have to block this mm -hmm. with money again. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why is that so? Is it because no, we're too scared of death and we're too, we yeah. want cheap things? Okay, you see now, the problem is that uh, when that's what, what we call deception. Yeah. You understand? Know, we have read here that they, 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 they deceive people. So now, uh, we cannot unlock anything with money. Yeah. You understand? Know, so that's why I say it's prosperity gospel. So it's, all, it's, it's out of context. The, 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 the message, the preacher of the preaching is out of context. Yeah. Because the message should be Christ. Yes. So whenever now is putting money instead of Christ, it's, it's, it's not in context with the with the Bible. The message in Christ from from the Old Testament to the New Testament is 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 is, is, is Christ. You understand? Old Testament the prophesied about Christ. The New Testament is fulfillment of what was said in the Old Testament. So it's all about it's, it's all it's all about Christ. It's not about money. Here. There's nothing about money. It's about salvation. So uh, anytime a preacher comes out of context and now is wanting to unlock doors, there's only one door. And there's no any other door that a man can open or a pastor can open. There's one door. Jesus said, I am the door. Yes. No one comes to my father except through me. Yes. You understand? Yes. So this kind of, of, of pastors, that's what, these are the pastors that preaches breakthrough. Yes. yes. You understand? So I, I want to breakthrough. have to breakthrough. <laughs> you understand? Yes. You know, uh, if I saw only that I don't have a picture of a tabernacle. I was going to show you a picture of a tabernacle. The, the picture of a tabernacle, this is the, the tabernacle is the typology of Christ in the Old Testament. It was a shadow in Christ. You understand? So it had only one door. Jesus said, I am the door. Yes. And you find that the Father is in the holies of holies there. So before you get to the holies of holies, you need to be sanctified. You need to, you need to come by the door. Yes. The door is the way. You understand? Know it was shadowing the weight. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, the weight the, the world there. For God so loved sinners okay. that He gave His only begotten Son, that any sinner that believes in Him will not perish but will have everlasting life. That's what the statement, the, 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 the message means there. Yes. So the Old Testament there was talking, the, 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 the typology, the, 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 the tabernacle there was the typology of Christ. So the, the door there is the weight. No one comes to my father except through me. So it gets sanctified by the weight. You get wise by the weight. You understand? Then they, after the, the, the door, there's a brazen altar. The brazen altar represented the cross. That's way they used to take their, their limbs when they sin. They, take, they sacrifice the animals there for sin. So it represented the cross when Jesus was crucified. After the, the brazen altar, there's a lava. Yeah. The lava is got water there. Meaning they, they have to wash their hands before they, went to, they go into the holy, holy place. Okay. You understand? So Jesus is water. Say them the living water. You understand? Yes. So if Jesus is the living water, you don't need any other water. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that water also represents the way. Yeah. We understand. Say them the living water. We understand. So now we wash your hands with the living water. That means you are washing you, yourself with Christ. Okay. You understand? Then you enter into the holies, holies. There's a show bread. There, there's bread. Where, where, where Moses used to enter there and the, the prophets, uh, Aaron. You understand? Yes. They separate. Then from the holies of holies, a, there, there was a fair there. They have to enter to, to the holies of holies. That was the dwelling place of God. Okay. So he said, no one comes to the holies of holies without through me. So yes. all this from there is Christ, 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 until you reach, reach the Father. Okay. You understand? So any message that is not of Christ, is not pointing people to Christ, is not of God. You understand? I can say, uh, the, the, a message that motivates people is not from God. It's not a message of God. If I come here to make, motivate you, will you be born again? No. No. A message of God should be convict you of sin. Then you get born again. So if I come and say, I'm going to make money, I see you rich, you are motivated. Yeah. So, so, so listen, that, that gospel does not save you, but it leads you to destruction. Yeah. You understand? I will give you an example. There was a rich man who came to Jesus. This, 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 this man was a lawyer. Yeah. You understand? He said, what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus referred him to his law. He said, what does the law say? He said, I've done everything in law. And this man was perfect eh? in law. And Jesus said, okay. He saw that uh, for sure he's a law keeper. 
Yeah. Then said, okay, for you to be perfect. So meaning that law cannot make you perfect. Yeah, that's true. Go and sell all your possession and follow me. Okay, follow me. The Bible says, and the rich man went home sad. Yes. And now just said, it is impossible. <coughs> I want you to note here. said, it is impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than a, 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 a camel to enter through an eye of a needle. Yes. Do you understand? So now when I'm preaching prosperity, I'm preaching a gospel that will make it impossible for yeah. you to enter the kingdom of God. That's, That's why the, the prosperity gospel is not the gospel of Christ. Yeah. We understand. Whenever I'm preaching about money, I'm preaching the gospel that will make it impossible for you to enter the kingdom of God. So the, 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 the gospel is not about money. The gospel is about Christ. It's about salvation. You understand? So uh, how different is this prosperity gospel from Rumba, you show now twilight. Ah, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's just the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, <laughs> before we draw to a close, because mm. uh, I don't know how free you are. Yes. I yeah. would really want us to have this kind of uh, conversation, yeah. if possible, every week. No, I'm available as long as this is about God. I'm yeah, available. Yeah. But yeah, of course, said. today was the introduction. Yeah. Yes. There will yeah. be times where we'll, I'm a very uh, a negative yeah. person here. Yes, here. yeah. There will be times when you will be here to argue. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you will argue with case, I will argue with mine. But yes. now, I, I have this question. Mm. In the times that we live in, mm. where opportunities are closing, especially in the employment uh, sector, uh, even entrepreneurship, mm. we are competing, we don't have enough to start something. Mm. How do people escape this web? Mm. Or, or, or of gospel lies, let me say, mm. where they end up being forced. Because when people become desperate, mm. especially for things of the flesh, they resort to spirituality. Mm. You've seen the proliferation of uh, his young. Mm. Any of them, you see them trade in that traditional regalia. Yes. Some of them forced themselves into that because they are not called them. Eh? Mm. Many prosperity churches are starting here and everyone wants to own a church. You've mm. seen political parties even here in South Africa, mm. I think they'll be around mm. a hundred and something or three hundred and something competing. Mm. I mean, uh, for elections. Mm. Now, how do people escape in terms of Christianity? How do they yeah. escape this web? Okay, I think we need to separate Christianity. People should, should know that uh, they, are, they, are, they come to Christ for salvation. Yeah. You understand that? When it comes for you to, to, for, to live, to have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, your life generally, yes. you, you, you need to work. You understand that? You find something to do. Yeah. You understand? You, it's not, it's, God is not holding anyone. You understand that? God, God, even, even people that are not uh, believers, yeah. they, 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 they are successful. You look at uh, Bill Gates, he's not a believer, but he's making money. So you can't tell me that uh, you, you come to Christ to make money while somebody who is not a believer is making money. So you, money, making money is for everyone, whether a believer or not a believer, you understand? Yes. So there's nothing that you, you can't come to fast. You cannot come here to pray for money, to yeah. say, I need money. No, no, no. If you want money, look for a job and work or do something to make money. You understand? That prayer does not bring money. That's true. Fasting does not bring money. You understand? It, 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 those things, they don't unlock the doors. If there's nothing that you are doing. Yes. What unlocks the doors is your ability to, to look for that money. You understand? It's not about uh, 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 your prayer. Yeah. You understand? So many people, they pray. How many people? They, you know, there are people that go to mountains, they pray for yeah, yeah, some of them. But you see these people, they are poor. <laughs> <laughs> if, if prayer could unlock the doors for you to preach, then uh, there's no need for 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 for, for, for industry. Then yeah, yeah. We also we, you understand if money can come in that way, easy way, just uh, go in fast. Then uh, what would be the need for industry? Yeah, <laughs> especially in Africa, will be very rich because yeah. Africa, they, they, that's what they know. Fasting and praying that's will be. We yes. understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So we need to work. You see? Yeah, I, I know you'll be very unpopular for this, but mm. now as a parting shot, yeah, I want to give you maybe. A minute mm. about this last message that you gave. Yes, yeah. Of separating this prosperity gospel from 
the true gospel of Christ mm. directly to the people. Oh, okay, yes. Hello, viewers uh, in the world. I would like you to understand that uh, the prosperity gospel does not save you, it will lead you to destruction. So, there's a difference between this prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel is when there is anything that involves money and you being prospering in the body of Christ. But the gospel of Christ is, all, is only about the death and the resurrection of Christ. So we come to Jesus because it's the lamp that takes away sin. So we are not preaching prosperity today. We are pointing you to the cross. We are pointing you to, the, to Jesus. We are pointing you to the doctor who will take care of the sins, who will take away your sins. So if we don't point you to, 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 to the doctor, that is Jesus, then we are, we are not saving you. We are, we are just putting you to the, to the pit. So we need to, to be careful with the men of God. And also you need to read your own Bible so that you can understand the word of God. God is love. God is willing you to be, he wants you to be saved. He wants you to come back to him and be saved and have eternal life. That's why Jesus came for that purpose. To save us, I uh, think. Okay, that, uh, thank you for creating our so show. Much. We'll invite you. Hopefully, we'll be with you again, uh, again next week. No problem. Okay. Uh, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Matters of faith on AVG Reality Channel. We had Pastor Kelvin Zivamose. Uh, we hope to be having him as we go on, maybe up to the end of the year, because <laughs> I can tell he's. Let me say. Without a shadow yeah. of doubt, but he's a very controversial pastor, uh -huh. uh, or will be deemed a controversial pastor. But of course, he speaks to a number of issues that we have always raised as a problem, especially to African Christians, where we give wolves in sheepskin a leeway to devour us, a leeway to play around with us, and at the end of the day rob us of the little that we should be preserving for our children thank you very much don't forget to subscribe to this channel like this video and share it